with this uh, video series, which I'm starting pretty late, <laughs> um, since we leave Singapore in about a day and a half, um, is looking through Japan's culture, looking through Singaporean culture, and seeing if their religious uh, majorities kind of reflect the way they live. Um, so here in Singapore, uh, it's mostly Hinduism, Islamic faiths, a little bit of Buddhist in there. Um, the priority, um, top priority religions here. And then in Japan, it's Shintoism and Buddhism. Uh, which make it, you know, interesting to look at and see. And you go, oh, what is, you know, what is this, you know, shrine I'm looking at? What is this gate? What is this, you know, Buddha? What is this, like, bunch of little children Buddha type of thing? And it's good to look at that and explore those cultures and see those cultures um, and see these religious cultures in real life and compare that to life um, in America and how it's, you know, whether you're a Christian or not, primarily looking at, you know, being a Christian uh, with that view of comparison. But, you know, do we live the same way? Do we value the same things? Are we asking the same questions? Are we looking for the same answers? Do the answers we have compare, you know, to what we think is, you know, the meaning of life and the purpose of life and what we're supposed to do with it and how we achieve higher expectations for higher you know, glorification what we glorify and what we worship so that's kind of a gist overview of what we've been looking at so some things I want to talk about um, or that I will be talking about are you know, how they enter religious sites versus how we enter religious sites do we enter churches the same as they enter their shrines or their places of worship um, another thing is how they treat the elderly um, and their view on uh, like, children, like young children's view to the elderly um, versus like you know, kids to their grandparents or their kids to their grandparents. Because um, it seems to be, there's, there's a difference. And I want to talk about those differences. Um, another difference um, I want to look at is, I'm blanking, what was it? Oh, it's my journal. Journal here. Glad I brought this. Um, oh, their sense of community, like per nation, uh, not just as like, uh, to their sense of, you know, I love this country and I love to be blank ethnicity because this um, or for this. Um, and does that spur from religion or is that, you know, just a sense of nationality? Or, national, or nationalism type of mentality, because um, it's there's there's change about culture. In the U.S. we're very individualistic. I want to do my own thing. You know, this is a free country. I want to do what I want to do. Or is it, you know, hey, for the better good type of thing? You know, I'm willing to sacrifice, um, which comes and goes in cultures, but you never really. No, until you're in it, you know, we can, someone can tell you, oh, this is how it is, and then if you actually go live there, and you might be like, what, really, is, it, is this how it is? Because um, you, know, you don't know what they're, you don't have any background on what they're saying. So, to continue our discussion, I want to kind of focus on going in and out of religious sites, and because I think that's a huge thing um, that I noticed it was one thing that I picked up on and I took some video and I'll show you guys um, is uh, just how like the Shinto and Buddhist cultures take that. They go and there's like a fountain or, like running water, holy water. And they running fountain, holy water, something like that, some form of water running. And they go and they take water and they wash one hand, wash the other hand, um, maybe do it again depending and then dump it out and then they go in for a sip. Um, that's like the traditional, very formal way to do it. But it's, that's at every site, and you see every kid, every adult, no matter who it is, if they know anything about Shintoism, Buddhism, um, they wash before they go to the temple or the shrine. And so that's it's just, it's a ritual. It's just what they do. It's just how they cleanse themselves to go before the gods or before nature, and, you know. Um, which is funny to look at and think about because how do you go into church? You know, how do you go into youth group? Because you think about how 
Christians going to church, what do you do? You shake a person's hand, you shake a greeter's hand, you look at them and you go, hi, how are you doing today? You know, and just walk, waltz right in, you know? And it's no this cleansing, there's no this, you know, prepare ourselves for, you know, worship or a service or to be blessed. Um, and Hindus, they have a feet washing ritual as well. I saw this and we saw this in Singapore. Um, and we couldn't go in because you had to take your shoes off. Um, it was actually wash your feet before you go in. There was a fountain there, which was really cool to see. Um, there was a kid just go up, knew exactly what to do, age of five. Took shoes off, washed his feet, walked in. Came out, washed his feet, type of thing. It was a cool watch, because these, these kids, you know, whatever. We go around, you know, sometimes swearing in church, stuff like that. So, walking in, you know, willy-nilly on our phones, you know, completely idolized by these things. Walking in the church, you know? This thing goes off in church while the sermon's going on, and I take it down, look at it, text back, do whatever. And for them, it's pretty much, you see them taking a lot of pictures, the Instagram's a huge thing. So I feel like that idolizing culture is still there and that very materialistic technology, but they, when they do their practice, when they go up to the shrine, wake up the gods and pray, you don't see cell phones out. You see, because you're not supposed to have cell phones and take pictures up there. Um, no one report me, please. Um, so, I just want to kind of just put that on your mind, see what you guys think. Because um, it's, it's interesting on how serious they take things. Uh, and that they really do believe that this is the answer. And that they believe they've got their questions answered. And that they're finding, you know, happiness, peace, prosperity, good health, all through this practice. having um, about you know cultures and the differences that we've seen in cultures and one um, one of the main things um, in this little snippet that I'll be talking about is the treatment of the elderly and how often in the US look at our elders or treat our elders or things you know examples you know not um, generalizations about it but just things that I've seen from my experience one, well, let me start U.S. It's easiest um, that we treat our um, elderly is most people treat them with respect. Most people are like respect your elders. Like that's a huge thing you probably hear growing up. But in practice, do we really? Okay, so with um, the American uh, culture of treating elderly um, with respect, um, there comes some examples of not treating them with respect. So you're probably gonna imagine there's probably some, you know, um, bad name people out there. <laughs> we don't necessarily want to say that on this you know, grossy video, but um, that you know, just look, you know, think about themselves and not actually come about that way, old man, you know, or don't, you know, give their seat up to you know the person who has earned it, type of thing, or through the years, or needs it because of like, you know, health complications and old age, or just for the fact that they've been standing for 95 years and you've been standing for you know, 28, type of thing. Um, or, you know, kind of that thing, man, I get screwed over by the economy or health systems and all that jazz for being old. Um, so that's kind of just where I'm coming from, is that, um, just that background that elderly people are generally thought of as, you know, to be in a place of respect, but not always there. But one thing I've witnessed in um, Japanese culture is the actual um, practice of that, to, to the fullest, which is the whole Japanese thing is going 100%, you know, going 1,000%. And 
know what your choice, but just do that. Um, so, one, one, uh, one example off the top of my head is, so I was riding the subway on my, alone one day, trying to meet up with a group, and um, there was this six, five maybe, five or six, maybe four, no, not four, seven. Six or seven. We'll go six or seven. I went. I went the wrong way. Estimating age. Um, like obviously going to school and riding alone, little girl. And this um, elderly man comes in and um, the crowded subway, obviously. And she just doesn't even just sees that corner. Like gets up, stands. She sit, and he sits. She like gets up, walks this way. He sits. Understand. And there's, there's like a little eye interaction, like eye contact, and they just get up, you know, type of like switch. It just happens so fluidly, you pretty much miss it. Um, and I was just like, she's, you know, young. I would have given up my seat for the little girl to sit in, you know, because she's, you know, a female and she's like a child. Priority seating to me, but like she gave it up to the elderly man. Like so, it's just like it was just ingrained at seven years old. It's a max of seven that she, you know, just gets up for the old, you know, gives her spot up. You know, she's this little child riding the public subway, you know, going from the safe spot to you know, standing at this point. So I just thought that was I just, I just could be a normal thing, but it struck me as cool. Um, and then I mentioned priority seating, and they have priority seating everywhere for elderly, um, for pregnant women, uh, if you're injured, um, they have kids, you know, elderly, so most of the time you just see people just get up for the elderly and just, you know, just give them their seat. Um, and it's like, just not even like an option, not even the only thing for us, like, oh, look, oh no, you can sit here, sir, type of thing. It's just, they just see them before they're even close and get up, so they sit. Um, in a crowded subway, you'll see people get out of non-priority seats and sit, like have the elderly sit, which I think is super cool. That's one thing that I'm, you know, like, gonna try to do more, you know, is just be more respectful of people, you know, because I'm an able-bodied person, so I can stand, or I can do whatever, help them out. Um, and you'll see people grab doors all the time for elderly people. It's just something I was noticing, because that's something that I picked up and was looking at. Scanning you know, for cultural stuff. This project. So that was just one thing I just wanted to throw in there and talk about. All right. The next topic I kind of talked about a little bit as I was introducing it. Kind of gave away the good points. Um, it's a sense of community. It is you know being part of something or being individualistic based on the culture we're in and. Uh, we basically went to two countries um, that are like polar opposites, that are like here and here, pretty much. And the United States is also, you know, very different. So it's like one here, one here, one here. Thing. Um, but I'll start with Japan. And so basically, um, very um, proud, very, um, what's the word, like idealized Japan um, in their mind. Idealize what it is to be Japanese. Um, they're very proud to be Japanese. They're like, yes, let's be Japanese, but very humble about it. And they don't like, no one's really like outwardly extremely nationalistic, but they're all on the inside. Like, you know, this is, this is what it means to be Japanese. Um, and only us, only Japanese people can be Japanese. Like, it's not like anyone can be an American, you know, anyone can move to Singapore. Anyone can, you know, go to France. Anyone can go to London, anyone can go to Canada, that type of thing, to ramble on. And so, their sense of, you know, community, their sense of nationality uh, runs deep, because it's a heritage, and it's um, a legacy, and a lineage, and tradition for them to be Japanese, and to have so much history behind it. Um, and so their sense of community is very large, and one thing that we had talked about is whether or not the next emperor will be named a god. Um, by the Shinto um, priests and the Shinto you know, religious um, uh, hierarchy. 
And so if he is, you know, the, <laughs> so the majority of the Japanese people um, will probably, you know, be willing to die for the emperor. Um, just that sense of, you know, whatever's best for Japan, you know. And so this sense of community and the sense of um, living for, you know, the betterment of the society is um, something that was very, you know, that you could see because they always took, you know, the road of not what's for me, but what's for, you know, what's better for the common good stance on, you know, even walking on the sidewalk, you know, they're not going to make you move, they're going to move themselves, or, you know, if they take a job that they're efficient at, rather than taking a job that they love that might slow the economy or something like that, you know, they, they put themselves in a place where they, the country will strive better at, you know, will strive more at. Um, don't really have, you know, video example of that, but here, I'll just talk about it. Uh, the next place, Singapore. Um, we talked to a guy in a cafe, a barista, and he was like, I've been a barista for 14 years in Singapore, moving around at the reason place for six months. Fatal place. And um, he's of Chinese descent, but he's born and raised in Singapore. And so one thing uh, that he was saying was that he doesn't know what it means to be Singaporean. Like he doesn't know Singapore culture. Like, he's like, lived here for probably 30 years um, and no idea. He was just like, I, I just don't know. I'm, about it. He's like, I'm just me, you know? And I just live like, you know, Chinese culture, Chinese way in Singapore. And he's just like, okay. And then I kind of got me reflecting, and I think I wrote a little bit about this, that the, um, there's just so many cultures there. It's a melting pot. It's more than the U.S., because the U.S. is pretty, you know, Caucasian. That it's just this blend, and everyone, like, like how your fingers blend together, they don't just turn into one hand or one finger. Everything's got a spot on you. This finger goes here, this finger goes here, this finger goes here, this finger, like, you know, everything intertwines and works, works in harmony, you know, kind of looking down then. And that's what I see as Singapore, is everyone is proud of who they are and where they come from. But they want to live with other people who are different from them and come together and be this one community where each individual, each person individually is different but together they make a common a common goal but very different like they have the own section like they have chinatown little india like the malay district like all of these different sections for these different communities for to them for them to live in you know so it's not necessarily cross ming like cross you know cultural m mingling but it's kind of like we're staying separate but we're going to live in the same general area you know and we're going to have like a combined economy and commerce will be good and you know all that jazz and so we get the best of the cultures together so that that's kind of a cool way it's pretty much you live for who you are and other people live for who they are and you just coexist together rather than I'm only gonna live here and I'm not gonna coexist with other people because they're not me you know because I'm so proud of who I am and what it means to be me not, not trying to put this in a negative way, but them, that I'm I'm okay with all this, and I live for all this, and, you know, like-minded people around me are what I want, you know, to be in my community. Not not unwelcoming, you know, very welcoming to people coming and experiencing it, but people coming and, you know, actually being part of that, you know, takes forever. It takes a long time to get into that. Anyway, and then those two, compared to the U.S., Pretty much, you know, the U.S. is like, hey, you got you, you're an individual person. You do what you want. You have every freedom, every right, everything to be your own single person. And that's pretty much it. And this single person is gonna be, like, oh, you know, me. It's whatever I want to do. It's a free country. I'm not living for the country. I'm living for me because I'm free in this country. Which is kind of just like, you're like, where are you on? You know, what? Where's that logic? You know, shouldn't you? Because of the country, you know, you're free, but you're not going to live for the country because you're free. Um, kind of confusing. I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, this is really, 
this is, is this why you know we run into so many problems and butting heads in our you know in our society because we are like all over the place individual individuality individualistics um, independence because you know we don't see you know a common good most I mean that's not generally generally everyone's like you know go America let's you know anybody else is worse than us we can all band together but there is that sense of we're all gonna band together but I'm you know not gonna do what you tell me because I'm my own person type of thing so it's where a lot of debate is and that's where I see like the you know there's different mindsets and mental shifts and um, paradigms that each culture has um, and that's just from I think it spurs from pretty much um, the foundings you know what they were um, coming from or like you know how they came to be um, and the re primary religions and the cross-cultural of those religions you know and what they spur and what those religions you know believe and then the cultures that then you know come from a religion and then spread out into you know different you know if it's religious you know sections or secular sections kind of you know but all coming from that base, those base ideas. So that's the second part. I hope you liked. Or third part. I hope you enjoyed that.